Hi y'all, it's Angela Prophet. And I'm Hannah. And we wanted to ask you a question today. Recently, I had someone reach out to me in the media that asked me what my thought was about the recent documentary that was put out for FIRE, which was an event that never really happened. And so I don't really watch TV, and I was like, what are you talking about? Um, and then somebody else asked me, and then somebody else asked me, <laughs> and I thought, well, dang, I better well, like watch this FIRE uh, documentary. Um, and then I've had people say, so what do you think about Billy? As if like Billy's my friend. Do you know Billy? I don't know Billy. Well, I know who Billy is now. Uh, jaw rule sidekick. Mm -hmm. But Hannah here did not get to watch the documentary with me. And so we were just talking about it and she just watched it as a teenager here and as someone who has started a business and a blog all about teenager views. What would you say it is? Um, it's called WWI through the teenage eye. So it's what does that worldwide issues. Oh, I thought you were going to say WWW like worldwide web. <laughs> I'm like, Hannah, how old are you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, say that one more time. WWI through the teenage eye. WWI through the teenage <laughs> I love it. That's like a rap. rap. Yeah, not That's a poem. Cute. So what, are, what, what were your takeaways? Oh, my gosh the communication that these men it was it was mostly men that were executing this are you knocking on men hannah i am not i'm just saying they could have done a little bit better i didn't even think of it that way and <laughs> they only had one woman running it with them and they told her absolutely nothing they said we bought an island and we're going to be doing a festival to promote Fire and Fire was a app that you could book very popular music artists, um, comedians, all the people that you wanted a birthday party or a concert for anywhere, and you could book them and have them there. Wait, so it, Fire wasn't an app. Fire was a music festival, right? It was a it was a it was a promotion for an app. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was a kickoff party. Yep. For an app. The app had already launched, but they wanted to promote it even more by having a festival um, with all the people that would be essentially on the app that you could book. So they had a bunch of the most, it was the top 10 most famous models in the world come out to an island, which was Paula Escobar's old island. Who's like drug dealer and FYI, we have the same birthday. <laughs> Amazing. Just saying. And they bought an island, and they were specifically told not to use, this is Pablo Escobar's island, and that's the first sentence in their video, is lawsuit. Okay, time out. So I have to say, um, in watching the documentary, I didn't even get that it was like an app. <laughs> so let's just start there. Um, I was just looking at, at it from the event planner angle because so many people have said like, what are your thoughts on that? And what, I'm like, what are you talking about? Why well, I, I would never see you planning a festival anyways. Well, no, I mean, actually from a music festival standpoint, one of my best friends is like very involved in music festivals, just like luxury events, like it's a beast in itself. And when you're going to invite that many people, okay, the other thing I've worked on private islands and mm -hmm. while it seems and sounds so luxurious. luxurious and glamorous, which typically like it is beautiful, but like the logistics of planning and getting everything there, like, those people would have fired me, like, probably within the first 60 minutes oh, yeah. if they would have even hired or engaged me. Most definitely. And I would have been like, good luck. Like, I'm not going to, I know too much. And it's almost like, not even they didn't know what they didn't know, which I think Billy and Ja Rule were that way, but the fact that all these companies, like professional media companies, they did not ask enough questions. It's like they just went off the fact that this guy had money slash influence. And he got his money from actually a starter business that he started a few years earlier. A startup. And yeah, startup. Mm -hmm. And 
he scammed a ton of people with this platinum card. I'm not really sure what it did, but they filed a lawsuit on him. and The magnesium card, I think is what it was. I think that was successful. Where the scam came in, at least from what I got, was they were putting money on that mm, card yeah. that was a wristband. So when you got to the island... No, no, no. This is a card before that, and they were like false advertising and making people pay a fee on the card, which was... Oh, that's right. So they were like that's making right. false money off of people. And so... What, like, what are, again, what are your takeaways from all of this? Like, they were not prepared. The housing that they said that they were going to provide were, for VIP members, they were going to provide villas, beachside. Um, Since when did a campground or a tent become a luxurious villa? And then for, you know, just the regular people that... Bought, just a regular person. Just wanted to buy a regular ticket, not a VIP ticket. And they bought out all the tents that they used in hurricanes around the world. And they placed them on the island and made people sleep in them. Whenever they were going to be given luxurious tents to sleep in. So they missold. Bottom line is, it showed me two things. Like my takeaway was Angela asked more questions to make sure you can actually pull stuff off. Um, I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much influence you have. If you don't know what the hell you're doing, nah, nope. And smart of those people to either get out or Billy fired them. But the fact that our culture is so sick and so influenced by money and beauty and these people did not know jack shit about what was going on but because of who it was and a little bit of money they thought hey money can buy you let's anything just, let's just hop on a plane and go to an island that we barely know anything about in the middle of the ocean and i kind of feel like the people that went who didn't know what they didn't know you know what you kind of deserved it you didn't like, yourself. I would never... Now, I get on a lot of airplanes, people, and I kind of know where I'm going, not all the time, but I know that I'm going to serve a client, and I know when I get there what I'm getting myself into because I've spent a lot of time planning, my team and I. And so just from a professional's view, again, like, they would have fired me within the first 60 minutes because I would have been like this and this and this and bathrooms and power and Wi-Fi and... In which they had zero. Of. And luxury? Like, what? And then the fact that it's like God started to rain on their parade. Like, the fact that it was raining when people arrived. Mm -mm. Like... I don't know. And I don't know. the time of the year that they planned it, they planned it on the busiest weekend in the Bahamas with a sporting event going on. So the island had doubled their population. And so they were just packing hundreds of people onto the island. That's like the CMA's uh, Country Music <laughs> Awards in Nashville. Like, I refuse to do any type of an event downtown Nashville when that's going on. Now, I've done it one time. One November, many Novembers ago, once, done it once. It was hard behind the scenes. I will never do it again. D doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There's no amount of money that you can pay me and my team to go through what we went through. And then, of course, the client wasn't happy. They were pissed because it was so loud and so distracting. And all the roads were closed, so our vendors couldn't get in. I mean, it was it was, it was a mess. What what were your other takeaways? Just keep people in the know, with, especially with events. None of the none of the workers knew when they were going to get paid, what the timeline was. Okay, retainer, like deposits, like, like you didn't pay any deposits, nothing. like really. And to this day, the workers still never got paid. In the it's Bahamas. a hard lesson. Mm -hmm. Hard lesson. And no time. They never had any timeline. All they did was send out a text to the people being like, hey, we need you to post this. The people never went to the islands, never saw anything. So you just have to keep your people updated for an event.
So did you like it? I didn't. I loved it. The most shocking thing to me, though, the older gentleman who has a ton of experience. and 30 who, years. Yeah. Like, and he's like, I washed my mouth out with mouthwash and was going to go take one for the team. And I'd be like, you go suck it. Like, excuse me? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? 30 years of experience and you stoop that low for a scamming entrepreneur for a festival that you know is not going to be able to pull off. I don't think he knew what he was doing. I don't think that he purposefully was scamming people of money. I really don't. He was he was purposely scamming, scamming people out of their money after, after he after, bailed out. After, after, after. But I don't think that he went into this like, oh, let's plan the biggest event ever, and then, like, let it go down. I think he planned this thinking it was going to be all funs and games because whenever they had the and photo shoot. And make a ton shoot, of money. And they were going to make a ton of money and be able to live off of it, but they had no idea going into it what it took to plan an event at all. People have no clue. No clue. No clue. That's why I'm so passionate about educating mm -hmm. and telling people because not enough people talk about it. I don't really watch movies. I don't really care about TV. Like, I'm really not into it. But I was like... Glued to the screen. Oh, I did not multitask. Mm -hmm. You were glued to the screen? I was glued to the screen. Absolutely. Did not move. And she was sitting at the office table watching it. So it's not like she was on the couch comfortable. So what are your thoughts on Fire Festival? Fire Festival. Fire Festival. That the never party happened. that never happened. And I didn't know what FOMO was. Did you know what FOMO was? I had was? no idea. Yeah, so I, I had to Google it. Fear of missing out. I'm definitely missing that sense. I don't have that. I don't, yeah. We, we don't have. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. No. I think I'm good. We create our own memories. Yeah. And then we share them and talk about them. <laughs> and what we did and what we wouldn't do again and how we would change it. Mm -hmm. What we learn. Which I think is more entertaining on our side. It's just more solid. Mm -hmm. Comment below. Let us know what your thoughts are. From a professional standpoint or a consumer standpoint. Do you have FOMO? Do you have fear of missing out? Do you, What are your thoughts on Billy? What do you think of Billy? Is Billy your friend? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Let us know. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Thank you.